It's like I say, we live in an external world. Everything is, is you gotta see it, touch it, it's, it's, it's external. If you can, for the rest of your life, live inside of yourself, stop listening to people who are calling you fat, gay, transsexual, nigger, everything that is makes no sense. All these insecure people putting their insecurities on you, you gotta flush it out. You gotta just be whoever the hell God or whatever the hell you believe in. If you believe in nothing but yourself, I don't care what it is. You gotta take everything and throw it away. You have to believe in one thing and that is yourself. And, and I'm not saying don't believe in God or what you believe in, but right now for you to find greatness in yourself, you're not gonna find it by looking in a book or by even hearing me. I may give you the spark, but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. And that means you gotta be quiet. Shut the fuck up, go in a room, stop talking, search your soul, search your mind, search your abilities, and you'll find it. But if you're not looking for it, you won't find it. So you gotta go start your journey. And the journey starts with you finding, why the hell am I here on this planet Earth? Why am I here? And if you don't know that, you will live the rest of your life searching, always asking the question, why? Even the hardest men, in times of suffering, what we do is we forget how hard we really are. Because that's what suffering is. Suffering is a test, that's all it is. Suffering is the true test of life. And so that cookie jar travels in my brain, so whenever I get put in a situation where I have poopy pants, the woe is me mentality of, oh my God, life sucks, I take a second, I take the one second decision, I step out of my life for one second, go in the cookie jar, pull up, oh, Mother, you went, you went three hell weeks and finished two. One of those hell weeks, a guy died because it was so bad. Oh, you are a mother badass. You are. I put it back in the cookie jar and I remember who the f I really am. I'm not the kid that, got, that was called nigga. I'm not the scared kid. This is who I am. It's a reminder of who you truly are at the core of yourself. But what I was saying to myself the whole time on that track, and, it, and this is what I say to myself, self-talk, and visualization are the two keys to my success. I believed for that last time, 19 miles, I was indestructible. Because I took myself in that chair, crapping up my back, peeing blood in my leg, shin splint stress fractures. I use all that for motivation versus negativity. I use it for motivation. I, I, I said to myself, who on this earth would still be going like that? You are. You are. You gotta be the hardest motherfucker on the planet. Is it true? I don't give a f At that time, it got me to the finish line of that race. I believed it. I believe it today. I believed it enough to where my body said, he's not gonna stop. And that's, I took all the negative things. I need to go to the hospital, this and that. And I used it all, who the hell? could even get on that chair. You did. Who the hell would even think about taping stress fractures up? You did. All those things I use for motivation. Well, there's a couple things here. If, if the person is above you or below you in the chain of command, so if they're below you in the chain of command, you you know you explain to them. You say, look, we don't need perfection. We're not going to have a hundred percent solution. We don't have hundred percent of the information. That's a good enough solution. We need to move forward. Let's execute. Um, and you know what? I'll take if things go wrong. Don't worry about it. I'll take responsibility for it. I'm not going to blame you. Which is what you're going to do anyways, as a good leader. So that's what you're going to do if they're below you in the chain of command. If they're above you in the chain of command, guess what? Same thing. You're going to tell say the same thing. Like, hey, boss, we don't need perfection here. Look, boss, we're not going to get all the information we need. We're not going to get a hundred percent solution. We got a ninety percent solution and let's go for it and if things do go wrong you can blame me i don't care so boom whether they're above you or you know below you in the chain of command you might change your tact or your verbiage a little bit but it's the same same overall concept you got to get them to understand that we don't need perfection we need to move forward and the other thing is you explain the cost of not moving the cost of staying still the cost of being reactive instead of proactive in basically the cost of not being aggressive because that's what we're talking about is a lack of aggression and so what does that look like well you explain to them that the longer we sit the better position the enemy gets into the longer we wait 
the less we know about what is actually happening. Think about that one. The more you sit here and you're planning, the less we know what's going on out there. The things are happening. Mm. They're changing. They're evolving. The enemy is maneuvering. Mm. There's developments on the battlefield or in the marketplace, and you don't even know because you're sitting in the planning space. Mm. The longer we wait, the less time we have to recover if something does go wrong. Mm. So if we sit here and plan for 47 days... And on the 48th day, we step out and we start to execute and something goes wrong, well, we're not going to make the 50-day mark because we spent all that time planning. So the longer that you're sitting around, the less time you have to recover and adapt and adjust. And the longer that you wait while you're doing planning, the less relevant your plan actually becomes. So that's what you need to make people understand. And then there's people that are just habitual and chronic ferocious analyzers Mm -hmm. and those are the people you gotta watch but you gotta continually just get through their head that the more we sit the more the enemy maneuvers and if we let them maneuver on us anymore we're gonna get killed Mm. that's it pretty easy no it's not easy it's a simple concept it's hard to get people out of their own heads just like just like everything else it's hard for the ferocious analyzer to recognize themselves as that Mm. they think they're doing a good job they think they're they think they're actually being thorough and you're a wild man. You're a cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> Are you crazy? Yeah No, I'm yeah. not crazy. I remember one time I, my first deployment to Iraq They said hey John this is after I've been there for a while and they wanted for some reason they wanted to know The minimum requirements for us to go out on an operation and I said I just need a vicinity of the target and of radio frequency to talk to the local uh, conventional units there mm. and they were like well don't you need air support don't you need this? And I was like all these other things I was like no we'll figure it out mm. just send us yeah we'll go and there was other things that we would do as we'd move to a target we'd align things up and we but we we'd be good yeah but sometimes people wanted to plan out every last detail yeah. and that doesn't work the details are not gonna stay the same the yeah. things that you're planning on are gonna change so yeah. don't sit there and plan every last detail because it's not gonna help you Things are not going to go perfect. Not going to happen. No such thing as flawless execution. Dave Burke just wrote an article that was on Business Insider. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Like flawless execution doesn't happen. Yeah. He, you know, he was a top gun senior instructor for three years. He he, he knows about flying. Yeah. And he knows how hard they worked to, to towards flawless execution, but it didn't exist. The flawless execution was... was Analyzing their mistakes seeing what they can improve upon that was the flawless execution for them yeah. It wasn't the actual act of flawless execution. They you know what they had flawless debriefing yeah. Flawless analyzation of what they did wrong. Yeah, but it wasn't gonna be perfect ops and no, no such thing doesn't happen Yeah, so if you're sitting and planning that trying to make that happen. It's not gonna work for you. Yeah, so don't do it